Far From Recovery, Stories from the Oregon State Hospital. William and Julie. It's basically been like chasing mirages for four years. And at every turn I'm being told that I'm gonna be allowed to go home to be with my family and help them, you know, help my wife and help my sons, which is the only thing that I have left after all of this. I mean, I'm fortunate to even have that. Mom of four boys, um, it is definitely a challenge, um, absolutely a challenge because, um, I mean, we had him for some time. He put um, the time in, he put, um, you know, all his effort into doing what he was required to do, and he did. I do everything, I do everything that they offer. Like, I don't, I don't ever miss a chance to do anything that is on the list or whatever they offer us. He was a veteran's peer support. So not only, um, you know, he was able to also go and reach out to other people, other people that had struggles that he's been able to get through and be a support for someone else. And that was huge. And that was, you know, good for him. It was good for others. Um, but at this point, it is comical to say that it is a mental health hospital. There is no, men like, the mental health treatment. There, like, what treatment? There's barely anything going on there. And that's like, and that's been for months and months and months. And I've gone back to just, I, this is just like, I'm in basic training. There's no, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. There's nowhere to even escape in your mind too. You better stay locked in. He was able to go on a computer for like, kind of like schooling time or like for him, he would try to research kind of what he's going to do in the future for like jobs and stuff like that. And um, in that time, he could communicate with us. They've informed them that they are going to be removing um, computer access. So um, hopefully that doesn't happen. Yeah, they took our computers off of the, uh, uh, off of these units and we don't get to go to a computer lab. I used to be able to at least use the chat to be able to chat back and forth with my sons and my wife. And like I was, I was using that to, to keep my oldest son like working out. We would work out together uh, through chat. I'd send him videos and for that we would both do at the same time. So we we're able to, you know, somewhat be kind of doing something uh, together. The boys count on being able to see dad. I mean, even if we can't be there in person when it was locked down, at least we can see him on video with video chat. At least we can um, communicate that way. And to not be able to have that um, is, it, it's heartbreaking. Not having the assistance of technology creates just more, you know, longer, farther chasms and you know, more absence from one another. So removing that support of him being able to have that connection with us and um, them saying that they're going to be taking away computer rights, you know, just, uh, it, it, again, it may sound silly, but like just being able to get like um, a message, you know, from him saying, hey, babe, I love you. How are you doing today? Um, it means so much. Anytime anybody asks me, you know, oh, do you know how much longer? No, I mean, we used to say, um, you know, hopefully Christmas, you know, hopefully by this birthday or that birthday. Um, and at this point, um, I mean, there's really, honestly, truly no clue. It's been like four plus years now of me telling my sons that I'm coming home. For more stories, visit droregon.org, far from recovery.